Hi there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. I want to do another video on the subject of functional dyspepsia, better known as FD. And what I want to talk about today is how there is actually a treasure trove of information out there on the internet from the medical research community. Now, if you're like me, struggling with FD and you're getting kind of frustrated by the symptoms and the fact that your doctors don't have answers and you're trying perhaps different medications uh, and not getting tremendous success, then I think it can be very helpful to uh, read some of these. Um, now, these are intended for doctors, uh, basically. So what I'm talking about is finding uh, journal articles and other sort of um, literature that is basically intended for medical professionals, but can be very, very information dense for patients and if you're working with a family doctor that maybe has never heard of FD or uh, the current treatment approaches in use then I think that finding these reading them reading them for yourself uh, perhaps if your doctor is amenable to such an idea printing them out um, or your gastroenterologist could be something useful um, I've definitely been having a hard time recently getting doctors to understand what FD is and that it's not sort of a uh, basket, um, whatever the word is, a wastebasket diagnosis, um, that's been tricky. And some medical professionals are dismissive. I find particularly uh, psychiatry who think that FD is a purely mental disorder, whereas the research is pretty clear um, that uh, there's, they're understanding a lot more about the, um, the fact what's wrong with FD patients. Now, there's two types of functional dyspepsia, epigastric pain disorder, and a postprandial uh, syndrome. And depending what type you have, you might want to set up um, alerts. Now that's actually one of the things I just want to sort of give a quick recommendation for also is setting up a Google alert. Google alert. I find this very helpful. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, let me just drag over my notepad. Go on to google.com forward slash alerts. Now uh, caveat is you're going to need a uh, Google account whether that's a G Suite or a, uh, or a Gmail account to sign up for those. Um, second tip uh, I have is um, it's very helpful to use exact match uh, parameters uh, for Google. It'll just make it sort of a little bit uh, easier to zone in on information that's actually talking about FD. So I'm pretty sure my Google alert is simply functional dyspepsia in quotation marks to get exact match results and uh, that is how I get it. And I check the alerts basically once a week and see if anything looks interesting that people are finding out about it. Second tip is to uh, use file type uh, PDF. Now this is a, uh, w another Google operator that will basically uh, just return PDFs matching your keyword. You can also go on to Google Scholar um, to find that more academic or uh, practitioner oriented research, but uh, the PDF file type operator is one I've been using for, I don't know how long, probably 10 or 15 years, whenever I'm looking for more kind of heavyweight material uh, that's just kind of out there on the internet. Um, it works really nicely for the most part. So just to give you a flavor for what's out there, here's just one I randomly stumbled across. It's a journal article from uh, Australian prescriber and it's by uh, lead author Nicholas Talley. Now, if you get into the strange habit of reading articles uh, about functional dyspepsia, you'll start to recognize a recurrence um, uh, among the, the, the researchers. I guess the gastroenterology research community isn't colossal. Now, one thing I always do recommend doing is just checking when the research originated from, because uh, hopefully uh, at least things move quickly in medical research and uh, something that's 10 years old might be quite outdated. Uh, where something that's recently published could be a lot more updated. So um, this article, for instance, just to give you, just to explain why I think these things are really useful, um, they're written for doctors, so they're gonna be, they're gonna use medical language. And as a non-doctor myself, I'm not a researcher, I'm not a doctor, I'm just somebody with a strong vested interest in figuring out my own functional dyspepsia. You just kind of have to get used to the language a bit. Idiopathic means uh, you know, that the origin isn't known or isn't understood. 
little things like this, but uh, I find I was able to sort of pick apart the main things uh, in this paper, at least uh, the differential diagnosis, uh, trying to figure out what, it can, what other conditions they rule out. This, this section is, is particularly interesting. So I presume this is intended for um, family doctors. I'm not exactly sure, but pathophysiology describing um, what they know about what actually causes FD. I'm just going to read, read some bits of it here. Functional dyspepsia has been considered an idiopathic disorder, but this view is changing. In some cases, FD develops after acute infectious gastroenteritis, suggesting blah, 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 H. pylori. Um, you just pick up these very interesting tidbits reading this. So here, here's, one, here's, here's, one, here's one of them. Gastric and duoden duodenal motility disturbances have been observed in functional dyspepsia. Uh, gastric emptying is often normal, but may be slow in 25% of patients. Um, however, symptoms have generally not correlated with slow gastric emptying. That's quite interesting. Other abnormalities, and this is what I have now. My um, gastro, my, my, my problems all basically began after I had my gallbladder surgery and my gastro says there is some kind of possibility of nerve damage, he calls it uh, impaired gastric accommodation, which is another term I've come across in the research about functional dyspepsia, uh, which means that your stomach just doesn't really open up. And they talk about this in this paper here. Other abnormalities include failure of the gastric fundus to relax normally after eating. This occurs in up to 40% of patients and is linked to early satiety. Um, patients, people, and uh, this is interesting for me because I have the postprandial type of this problem. People with post postprandial distress have unique duodenal pathology, namely increased duodenal eosinophils that may degranulate. Now, eosinophils, I know this, I know this uh, because I have asthma. Uh, eosinophils, it's, it's a type of uh, white blood cell that I believe is associated with allergies. Uh, when you take drugs like Singular, they're supposed to reduce your, your eosinophilic uh, levels. Don't, you know, but you, 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 you can pick these, these little things up. Uh, psychological distress is common in patients with FD, but may begin after the gut symptoms manifest. And I kind of think that this is what happened to me. I was definitely always had maybe a touch of anxiety and maybe also depression, uh, but it just got so much worse since this started, mostly because the things that keep you mentally healthy, like exercising and jogging, are a lot harder to do when you're feeling like bloated all the time. So um, that's, what, that's what I pick up from all this research about this, is that doctors are like, well, yeah, definitely uh, psychological factors can make this worse but um, I don't really see in the papers I read about FD a, a general consensus that this is a uh, somatic disorder. And that's always annoying when you walk into um, a doctor's office and you get that feeling. Uh, so when I presented to a psychiatrist to say, I think this thing is making me depressed and I probably need to get some help for that. Um, they were insistent that their drugs would sort the problem 100% and I did not find that that occurred. Um, so yeah, it can be frustrating to try to battle for help for this disease. Um, proposed disease model interesting uh, has been proposed. Now this, this stuff is beyond me. I'm just, uh, as a lay person, I'm just trying to pick out the tidbits that I can understand. <laughs> There's a lot of depth here that just goes way beyond um, what I can wrap my head around, but um, you, you might be the same. And if you have a background in medical research or you're a medical professional yourself, um, you're probably gonna understand 10 times as much as I do. Uh, typical diagnosis, um, and then it gives, uh, you know, about what kind of helps, some dietary tips. Um, this was really useful. There's a, uh, there's a little breakdown here by the two types of FD rating uh, which how the evidence is for each type, EGS and postprandial distress syndrome. Um, and uh, talks about funder relaxers, antidepressants. I just want to zoom in on this because there's so much discussion in FD communities about uh, amitriptyline and nortriptyline and the other uh, tricyclics. So um, now this is a 2017 journal article, so it's from four years ago now. And what, what they 
say in their section about antidepressants is that low dose tricyclics are superior to placebo for FD, but they are probably most helpful for those with epigastric. Uh, so that is interesting. That's kind of what I've always figured because when I looked up amitriptyline, what are these older antidepressants? I got stuff about pain and migraines and for my type of FD, postprandial i do not have any pain whatsoever so i it was kind of had a suspicion that would that was going to be the case um and just give some dosing recommendations uh ssris and snris are reported to be better than placebo footnote 27 and blah 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 and lots and lots more info there now uh, another paper that i found really really interesting mentioned this drug and this one came from Again, this researcher, Nicholas Tal Talley, an Australian gastroenterologist, is, uh, is, is one of the, the co-authors of this paper that's available on the internet. Uh, this is from Expert Opinion, and it's from, let's see, it does say that it's fine for personal use only, which is why I'm uh, feeling comfortable enough to screencast these videos. Um, emerging drugs expert opinion. I, I was looking for the name of the journalist not just called Ex expert opinion it's expert opinion on emerging drugs or something of that nature anyway this is a longer document and uh, there it does talk about a drug called acotiamide and this is the only drug in reading these papers that i've come across that i say oh that sounds like it's actually really intended for FD and sounds actually very promising. The rest kind of don't really uh, sound that way or they're saying for these drugs like amitriptyline, well, yeah, we're using it, but the evidence is kind of mixed. Um, so this is currently, I never thought I would utter this sentence in my life. I wrote to the FDA and the EMA this week, the European Medical uh, Authority, just asking them if they have any information on where those drugs stand currently in the regulatory process. I know that in America, uh, it does seem as if they're undergoing acotiamide is doing the late stale clinical trials. Um, they're currently being used in India and Japan. So more developing world healthcare systems have already approved and people are posting on the internet on uh, personal Facebook groups and uh, Reddit and medical websites uh, from these countries saying they're having great success with it. So um, I, it's, it's a drug I would love to try and therefore I am trying my best to uh, figure out when that might be a possibility. Um, nice little diagram here of the stomach with other, uh, other drugs being used. Finally, I came across this uh, little uh, treatment chart from The Lancet. Uh, that basically for doctors um, provides them with a diagnostic pathway in terms of um, just kind of summarizes everything actually a really nice little PDF here uh, talking about the two different syndromes in FD postprandial and epigastric pain syndrome gives a little bit of info about what we know about its pathophysiology the immune dysfunction alterations in the gut, gut microbiome uh, gut brain axis dysfunction and then management uh, if you're under 55 like me have an endoscopy sorry yeah have an endoscopy uh, test for H pylori um, PPIs I've been on those things for many years and it hasn't uh, improved or made this worse then a trial of uh, a trial of a tricyclic or a prokinetic uh, if your symptoms result if you symptoms resolved you're in business um, and you can be discharged and continue monitoring and if they persist consider psychological therapy for uh, and that's kind of basically where it ends over there so um, you how did I find this info I just typed functional dyspepsia file type a PDF into Google um, I also think that uh, setting up a um, keyword alert would be very valuable because this is only going to catch PDFs and if you do set up a Google alert, you're going to be kind of drinking from the fire hose as, as they say, in terms of just getting in all the info, uh, it can be a bit overwhelming. So I personally have mine running once a week and I just go through it and I try to see what people are saying about FD and what researchers are figuring out, etc. cetera. And, um, anything that looks vaguely interesting or promising, uh, I will be uh, reporting back upon on this channel because uh, it's I've received a very um, 
uh, enthusiastic response to the couple of videos so far. People also struggling with this. People also trying to figure out this condition uh, just reached out to me through various means, a lot of emails. Uh, and um, it's good to know that these videos are connecting with people. I'm not providing medical advice. I'm just a patient trying to help other patients to join this collective pursuit because it's kind of a shared mission really of uh, sourcing information from anywhere we can source it from uh, that may be helpful. And I think this is kind of where the, you see the internet at its best when uh, people are just trying to help one another because ultimately we all want to uh, either get our FD under control or get our FD completely better and we're all trying to search for these glimmers of information from wherever we can get them. Hope this video was uh, useful and if you would like to get more uh, videos please feel free to subscribe. Again I emphasize this is not the medical information not a substitute for that in any way shape or form uh, if you have fd or suspect you have fd then the obvious thing to do is to uh, go to your doctor and uh, tell him what your symptoms are and let the professionals handle it hope this video was uh, was helpful again and thank you for watching